Hello and welcome to Box, where we unbox, review and demonstrate the latest tech. Today we have with us the Samsung Frame in 55 inches. Designed to perfectly replicate a piece of art on the wall, Samsung's 2021 Frame TV wants to change the way the TV looks when not in use, transforming it into something that blends in with your home decor rather than sticking out. We have the 55 inch model here with us today, but this also comes in two smaller sizes of 43 and 50 inches, as well as a much larger size of 65, 75 and 85 inches. Opening the box, you'll find all the accessories you need located in the top inside the opening and just inside these two boxes around the back of the TV. Opening up the accessories, you'll find a remote control and a smart remote, a 4K invisible cable for the One Connect box, a power cable and a handful of user guides. As a bonus, you'll also find two additional boxes that house the thin wall mount and the One Connect box for all the inputs. Now this TV is designed for the wall mount, thus having the no gap wall mount included in the box. Unfortunately, we can't mount this TV for you, so we'll be showing off the frame on the stand today. But if you would like to wall mount, there are plenty of videos out there that explain the wall mounting process in detail with this included wall mount, in case you want to go ahead with this particular method. The back of the TV has a clean, plain look to it, only housing the 200 by 200 vaser in the middle along with the two no-gap wall mount cutouts in the left and right, and the single one connecting the wire port in the centre. So for fitting the stand, it was a very simple process. I just placed the TV face down on a flat covered surface before sliding the legs into the back in the spaces provided. This stand does have two height adjustments, depending on if you wanted to place a soundbar under the screen or have it flat to the TV stand. One of the most desirable parts about this TV is the ability to place it wherever you see fit without having to worry about wires and nearby power outlets. Of course, it works best for mounting seamlessly to the wall thanks to the single invisible wire that attaches to the back. All of your inputs are situated here on this compact little One Connect box. It's not as big as the one you'll see on the higher end Samsung models from 2021, but rather one of a more manageable size that can be tucked away out of sight. On the box, you'll find the power input on the top, two USBs, an antenna port, an optical audio out, a LAN port for the internet, and four HDMI ports with one supporting eARC and one supporting connectivity to the next-gen gaming consoles for 4K gameplay at 120Hz. Now it's ready on the stand, let's go through the setup stages. Setup is practically the same as most 2021 Samsung models, taking you through the usual logins on your Samsung account as well as making some initial decisions on which functions you want to enable straight away. You can skip the majority of these if you're not interested in them, but some might take a second to think over, such as the subscription service to the art store. Though the Samsung Frame's whole aesthetic is based on the art gallery theme, you won't have access to the whole library, so at this point it will prompt you to sign up to the full paid service, either monthly or annually, so just be aware of which option you opt for at this stage. Powering it up, you get access to the 2021 Tizen operating system with a single pop-up scrolling menu on the bottom, with further expanding menus for the quick access settings and features. I like how it has all of the most popular streaming apps to hand on the main page, with all of the other recommendation tiles further down below. So right away I can get straight to what I'm looking for. Of course you can control all of it using the new Solar Charge Smart Remote that comes with most Samsung models in 2021. I just prefer this remote to any other remote I've used because it's lightweight, it has very few universal controls that can do everything you need, and also houses the voice controls for navigating Google or Alexa voice commands. But before we get into the display, Play, let's take a good look at the overall design. Right away I can see how beautifully thin it is. With the whole body looking just as thin as a picture frame from the side, you can see how this model lives up to its name. The sides come with this thick standard edging that's built to attach additional clip-on magnetic bezels that come in up to 40 different colours and styles. Now you don't get any of these optional bezels in the box as they are sold separately, but I feel against this light wall the TV still looks great as it is. I like the little thin TV stand legs, the space between the legs does measure at about 35 inches wide and 2.5 inches high, which is plenty of room for an average soundbar. It's also great to see that it offers an edge to edge picture, leaving no chunky out of place black borders along the edge. To make the most of this TV, you have to get into the art mode. Now as long as you're signed into your Samsung account already, you do get full access to the free art that's already installed under the complimentary collection. You get about 20 pieces of art to choose from with some variety in style, but the full package does offer hundreds more. However, as it's also like a digital photo frame, I like having the freedom to add my own photos instead, whether that be family or friends or artwork of my own design. I know some of you might be worried about leaving an image on the screen for extended periods 
of time. But there are a few options for power saving features within the mode settings, such as simply turning the brightness down, setting it to sleep after a period of time, or even setting up the smart motion detector to switch off art mode when you're not in the room that helps save the screen from any deterioration. Of course, if it is in your interests, there is a full subscription mode that lets you access all of the art that Samsung has to offer, and from what I've seen, there's a lot of variety, broken down into categories and colours to help you find the right style for your home. Overall though, I found the brightness in the art mode to be quite low in a naturally lit space. You can turn it up, but this can cause problems if you leave it on the same image for an extended period of time, and it will of course consume more energy in the process. The art mode is easy enough to navigate once you spend some time getting used to it, and I could install and select my own photos easily when connecting the TV to the SmartThings app on my phone. Though I'm not subscribed to the paid service, the free features work just as well, and the genius choice of letting me choose my own images just lets me open up the feature to further possibilities. A quick thing to remember with this TV is that art mode will automatically come on when you press the power button once. You can turn this feature off, but as it's the main concept of the TV, it's something to bear in mind when considering how it will work in your home. To turn off the TV though, all you need to do is hold down the power button and the screen will power down as normal. When it comes to the display specifications for this TV, you get a QLED display with a 4K 3840x2160 resolution. It comes with a whole host of impressive features like HDR10+, one billion colour, and supreme UHD dimming thanks to the quantum processor 4K. There's even a good handful of extra Samsung features like tap for auto connecting your phone for screen mirroring, as well as multi-view for having two inputs on the screen at once. All of these enhancements clearly come into play when watching a couple of high definition movies and 4K ready YouTube content. Comparing to some of the 4K TVs on the market, the colours are vibrant and rich, showing off animated movies in all of their glory, and cinematic blockbusters give off a nice natural look thanks to using filmmaker and cinema modes and the intelligent colour volume. Of course, you can alter the picture settings in more in-depth menus, but I always gravitate to the simple presets as they bring more out of a variety of content as opposed to altering the settings to apply to everything. The natural and standard modes seem to work best for most shows and movies, with the filmmaker and movie modes making the screen a lot darker in daylight conditions. Now the panel is a VA type with an edge LED backlight. Despite this, the contrast is pretty precise. I couldn't see any visible issues with blooming around high contrast scenes, assuming this was thanks to the contrast enhancers in place. Now we do have a whole host of intelligent features to help the picture perform at its best when switching between content like adaptive picture and AI upscaling. I thought this helped wonderfully when switching between new and old content, as older movies and shows looked amazing with hardly any pixelation or blurring. Overall, I thought the picture came out detailed and sharp across a variety of content in both light and dark conditions. The screen does have a matte coating, causing glare to even out on the screen easier than the glossy variant. Even the viewing angle was clear no matter where I sat, reassuring me that everyone can see the screen no matter where I place it. Not going into too much detail, I did a few basic tests to watch out for blooming, light bleed, and overall brightness, and it came out relatively well in natural and low light conditions. The brightness was set to default, which is the max brightness, but as you can see here, the picture is still well lit, which is good to know for darker movies, though I wouldn't recommend keeping the brightness on high all the time, as it can cause defects in the picture over time. I didn't notice any severe blooming around subtitles when watching a dark scene in a show, and there was a clear definition between between light and dark parts in the picture, giving some true deep blacks when watching in a bright room. In a dark space, some of the standard definition content did suffer a little in the darker parts, but it was generally pretty sharp. I felt I did notice some dimming in places when switching between light and dark shots in movies, but it wasn't noticeable enough to ruin the experience, keeping the quality largely consistent. Looking into sound specifications, you get 40 watt, four channel speakers that fully support Dolby Digital Plus, and of course, Samsung's Q Symphony. There are a handful of AI modes that come under the intelligent mode banner, each one adapting the sound to best fit the content. I had the majority of the features set to auto, knowing that this would help the intelligent modes balance the sound nicely when switching between movies and shows without me having to delve into the settings menu each time. Of course, you can get the option to add an additional sound system if you wish, but having the auto volume and amplify sound enabled, I got an even sound output that helped enhance speech clear enough to hear well all around the room. Overall, the sound output wasn't at its best. It seemed a little quiet even on the slightly higher volume than I would usually set, and there was a slight lack of bass even with the AI features enabled. Of course, it's always hard to take my word for it, so here's a small sound sample to give you an idea on the audio quality on offer here. <laughs> Nice. 
catch, kid. Let's get out of here. For the gamers, you will be pleased to hear that this TV is fully compatible with the latest next-gen consoles. With one HDMI supporting 2.1 high-speed 4K gameplay at 120Hz, you will need to swap it out if you do have more than one console. But overall, the gaming features on this TV help make gameplay smoother than before with the help of ALLM and FreeSync Premium Pro support. It's all collapsed into the game bar on the bottom of the screen when game mode recognises a console and activates automatically. The bar is helpful for showing all of your game stats quickly for full assurance that you're playing at full spec. Gaming on the Xbox Series X was generally a smooth experience. The picture seemed to come out beautifully sharp across a variety of games that I did play, and of course playing a high speed game like Forza Horizon 4 in game mode, I wasn't interrupted by any disturbances like stuttering or lag. I played a few games with both game mode on and off, and the difference, though subtle, really comes to your attention when playing it off after having experienced it. I love having a TV that does put gamers in mind, even though it offers only a small amount of game enhancements, it is reassuring to know that you will get a solid gameplay setup as well as your regular viewing. Overall, this TV is the perfect model for those who are very design focused. It does have a brilliant display quality with most of the features you love about Samsung TVs available in even this super thin display. If you're not too focused on the art mode feature, its customizable frame and how it looks hanging on the wall, then maybe it's worth shopping around. But this model is completely unique with very little competition for its specific aesthetic. It's perfect for wall mounting and it's delicately thin flush mount and compact one connect box. It's perfect for minimal homes and saving surface space. It also works very well with next-gen consoles, utilising those amazing game features that let you play high-performance games as intended. For the design conscious, this is the perfect model to bring that touch of luxurious perfection and the illusion of a tech-free living space to your home. So what are your thoughts on the Samsung frame? Let us know in the comments below, and if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Box, where we have plenty of hands-on reviews on the latest tech. And as always, thanks for watching.